Hello, everybody. Welcome back to How Come. This episode is all about abortion rights. Um, We recorded it back in September, right when the uh, new law came into effect in Texas that any pregnancy in which a heartbeat is detected cannot be aborted, Um, effectively meaning that if you are six weeks pregnant, you cannot have an abortion in Texas, um, which is crazy because abortion right activists estimate 85 to 90 percent of people who need abortions in Texas are at least six weeks pregnant. Um, I know I personally, um, I was five weeks pregnant when I went to the doctor and then they made me wait an, an additional two weeks because they were like, this clump of cells isn't big enough to be aborted yet. So um, that's no good because that would make all of those abortions illegal. We recorded with six different companions who have stories, either a story of their own that they went through or a friend that they helped or a parent or something like that. And um, they're great stories. We highly recommend listening to this entire episode. It is long, but it is worth it. Um, Trigger warning, there is assault, there is rape, there is... um, obviously just very upsetting content in this, um, but it's all very important. Also, some of the uh, companions that we spoke to might have used language that is a little more gendered. Maybe they didn't say cis women, and maybe they didn't say people with uteruses. Um, If they didn't, I'm so sorry. Um, I tried to edit as best as I could, but just know these are abortion rights for anybody with a uterus and we support all of you. Um, And as recently as today, I got an email from the Abortion Access Front, um, which said that there have been more than 100 abortion restrictions enacted just this year, Um, as in this year that is still not over yet. Um, And so, yeah, obviously this is an important episode. The audio is not the best. Um, Technu was being a butt and clumped all of the audio together. So there, I, I couldn't split the tracks. There might be, I, I worked my little hind off though. So, um, yeah, just, just give some grace, but yeah, the episode is fantastic. I am so grateful to all of these people who shared, um, these stories with us. And I would actually just like to kick this off with a little story of my own, Uh, I got a message in my inbox today um, from a man who, I think he's trying to date me. I think he's trying to date me or trick me or something like that. And the message said, you look so familiar. I think we have met. I'm not sure when or where, smiley face. Were you ever a baby cuddler at the hospital I work in or attended the TED Talk I spoke at? Cheers. Um, First of all, what is this trap? What is a baby cuddler? Because, like, I love babies um, so much. And I would love that to be my job. I looked it up. Apparently, it is a real volunteer position that you can do um, is cuddling babies in the NICU who don't have access to their parents and stuff. How cute is that? Apparently, it's very competitive because everybody wants to be a baby cuddler. Um, I do wonder how they sort out the creeps and stuff. But, yeah, that's a job. And, yeah, the other half of this where he was like, (laughs) were you at a TED Talk I attended? Would you have remembered my face if I were at a TED Talk? Like, nice subtle drop that you gave a TED Talk, but also, like, do you look out at audience members, sir? Anyway, I thought that was funny that I got that message today while I was editing this episode because it just reinforces, like, how much of a not baby killer I am. Uh, I know a lot of people are who might see an abortion episode and, you know, that's where their mind immediately goes and... It was so nice to get this message because I was like, no, I love babies. I just didn't want a baby six years ago. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to hear this episode. We talked to a bunch of companions and you're going to love them all. Um, Most of them are in the U.S. Our last one is not. Um, But, yeah, if you guys have your own stories and you want to send them in, we will be sharing them all week on the Instagram. So feel free to follow us at How Come Podcast and send in your own story. Thanks to Dipsy for supporting How Come. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories. If you're looking to heat things up, there's a story waiting for you. Get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash howcome. Thanks to BetterHelp for supporting How Come. For 10% off your first month, go to betterhelp.com slash howcome. Start living a better life today. 
And thanks to June Shine for supporting How Come. June Shine is better for you hard kombucha alcohol made with real organic ingredients that make it unlike any other alcoholic beverage. Get 20% off site wide plus free shipping at juneshine.com slash how come. That is J U E N shine.com slash how come. Or use promo code how come at checkout. Okay, you guys, you're going to love these stories. The first one warms my heart so much I can't even stand it. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Because I can do it by myself. I want to just... What's up? Welcome, Kelsey. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Happy to be here. How are you? Can you guys hear me all right? Cool. Amazing. Good. I wasn't sure if it would be windy or not because I have to be outside today. So Where are you? I'm embarrassed to tell you where I am. Uh, I'm at Pebble Beach, the golf club place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want to be here, but my dad wanted to go really bad and I'm walking along with him. So here Hilarious. I am. Love yeah. it. Yeah. I'm excited to get a story out that these things need to be heard. So yeah. Hell yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Tell us your store, please. Oh, man. Well, where to begin? Uh, I was dating someone um, and we were together for two years. We broke it up. Um, He actually moved. I was in Michigan at the time. So um, he Mm -hmm. moved away from Michigan, another state. You know, no big deal. We had sex one last time before he left. Um, A last hurrah, as you do. Yeah, exactly. So that was in November. Didn't think much of it. And then um, started seeing this other guy. Um few months in, like, I, you know, my period was a little late. So Mm -hmm. I got a pregnancy test. And out of all the times my period's been late, that was like the least that I thought I was pregnant. I was like, definitely not this time. Like all the other times I'm like, for sure, I feel like awful. This has to be it. And it never was. So this time it was. And like my first instinct, I called my girlfriends, talk to them about it, Mm -hmm. panicking. It's like, for me, I'm like, I don't want to do this. And they're like, well, just do the pros and cons thing. And I'm like, yeah, I might as well. Yeah. Um, so I made my own little pros and cons list, mostly cons. I was, I guess mm-hmm. I was 23 at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the guy I was with, I called him over. He, he could tell by the tone of my voice what, where this was going. Um, and I had him make a pros and cons list. Cause I could tell right away. I'm like, his reaction is not what I thought it would be. Um, what did you think it would be? I thought he'd be like, oh, my God, get an abortion tomorrow. And I was like, cool. That's that's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he was kind of like not upset about it. And I'm like this. The, mm. I don't like this. Like, this is strange. This is not how it normally goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so he made a pros and cons list and he had mostly pros. And I was just like, oh, no, what am I? Where is this yeah. going? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we had a little conversation about it and I, I wanted an abortion. And then he started mm-hmm. giving me all these reasons why I shouldn't get one. And I was like. Well, whoa, whoa. Hmm. Okay. And I was still kind of mad at my ex. So part of me was like, maybe I should just have it. Maybe this is where I was supposed to end up like just a few months later. No. And, um, <laughs> right. That doesn't make sense. I'm just making sure that it wasn't the ex's baby. Cause it's well, hang on. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, then like a week later I end up like really, really sick. Like I, I couldn't keep down any food or water. Water mm-hmm. was the main thing. Like I could not keep water down. So I ended up going to the emergency room because I just needed fluids really bad. Um, and they did an ultrasound and they were able to tell me how long I was. And I think at the time they told me seven weeks, which did not add up to it being my ex's. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it's for mm-hmm. sure his. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, I guess I'm having it. Like it, it felt like it was already too far. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know in yeah. my brain, like I was just yeah. like, okay, like it's real now. I saw a picture kind of thing. Um, yeah, and he keeps saying all these, he pros. Kept, yeah, he's like, here, I can be here for you. I can leave work to come help you with the emergency room. Like, and I'm just like, okay. Like, and he, uh-huh. he had a good job. So I was like, okay, there's money there. Like, I'm, I'm not going to have to worry about that part. So I mm-hmm. thought, okay, this is it. We're good. But so I thought I'm um, however long, I can't remember how many weeks they told me, but I knew it was his. And then <laughs> We're just like weeks and weeks into this. I tell my dad he's not very happy because he's like, that's not what you want. I know it's not, but I didn't Mm -hmm. listen to myself. Mm -hmm. Um, But then weeks go by and then there's one, I'm like super depressed. Like I am miserable. I'm trying to tell myself I'm happy, but like Uh. I I wasn't like, I definitely wasn't. I, and I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. Like it was just gnarly. And then, 
Yeah, it was it was not fun. I did not have a good time, especially because deep down I know I didn't want it. So I think my body was like trying to tell me too, like and this also isn't pregnancy, right. Pregnancy like can suck. Like it can like oh, very much suck for your body. And so if you don't yeah. want it, like that's just yep. double bad. And the only thing I could keep down was sour watermelons. The little Sour Patch Kids. Like Sour Patch That's, Watermelons? Oh my that was God. the only thing I could eat, <laughs> which was kind of nice. I won't lie. Um, Hilarious. But anyways, uh, so a few weeks in, he takes me to some barbecue place. I'm like, I hope I can eat it. And I get there and it was the most disgusting barbecue in my life. And I was like, I hate you right now. Like, how dare you bring me to this disgusting barbecue place? And Stop then, putting things I don't want in my body. Exactly. Um, and then the final straw was he was trying to connect with me because I was very not connected to him at all. Um, he was trying to connect with me and he showed me a picture on his phone and he's like, look at this cute wolf I found. And I'm like, that's a fucking fox, you dumbass. Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? And I told him, I'm like, bring me home right now. I go home and I go downstairs to where my dad was and I just start bawling my eyes out. And he's like, what can I do for you? And I'm like, please find me an appointment. Like I, I have to do this. Aww. And so he, my dad actually did everything for me. He found a place. In a, yeah. So we were on the west side of Michigan. That's why we go we, with him to Pebble Beach. Yeah, yeah. We this do whatever is, he wants now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, we actually had to go. I'm on the, we have a map in Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. So I was on the pinky side and um, Detroit. I had to go all the way to Detroit on the thumb side. So my dad okay. drove me uh, almost three hours over there. And for them to actually tell us that we have to come back the next day for the appointment. Oh um, my God. So we drove all the way home and all the way back. But actually that first appointment, they did an ultrasound and they were like, how far along did you say you were? And I'm like, well, the emergency room told me this. They're like, no, not at all. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they told me, I can't remember how many weeks. I think it was like 14 or 15 weeks, which is <gasps> like inside. I was like, I can't believe like this is where I'm at. Like, yeah. And then I did the I did the math and it was my exes. Oh it god. A, it was a hundred percent his. <laughs> yeah. I knew it all along. I know. <laughs> yeah. So it was his and I was one week away from allowing or to have the pill instead of the surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, which really hurt me. And especially like my biggest thing was with my dad, like when I came out of the room and they had to do all the math of how much it would cost, it was like three thousand dollars or something. And that's when I started really crying. I'm like, dad, I'm so sorry. He's like, don't yeah. even worry about it. Stop. Like he knew it was the right thing to do. So it's like, so I have they to had help to... you with a baby. If not yeah. For this. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, I'm not ready to be a grandpa. So, Mm-mm. um, so they, they had to stick a bunch of seaweed sticks into my like uterus. It hurts so bad. I what? don't. What? Yeah. So they stuck seaweed sticks, like up whatever it, is it your you your do you get a wrist hole is that i don't know whatever next hole there is cervix? in there cervix that's what it is yeah. yeah so they stuck a bunch of them in there and what happens is when the liquid inside goes into the seaweed it widens it so i was slowly getting stretched out inside basically like contractions uh-huh. but i had to wait 24 hours so i and they couldn't take any medicine or anything so i was just like oh it was so bad i'm like if i can handle this i could handle like where I actually get a prize at the end. So at least I I feel that coming, but yeah. Yeah. So So, yeah, the next day we go there and my dad brings me, I get it all done and I leave and I end up texting my ex, um, you know, what happened. And Mm -hmm. he like was super mind blown. And that was actually like the moment where him and I started talking again. Um, cause it really meant a lot to him. Like, Just the fact that I'd talked to him about it. And then, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just like a big emotional mess, you know, as you can imagine. Um, But we've been together. Wait, you guys got back together? We've been together ever since. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. I actually moved down to South Carolina just a few months later. So, yeah. Best story ever. Yeah. So, we're engaged now. I got my little uh, fancy ring. I'm correct. (laughs) Thank you. And he actually, he gave me my own congrats as well. Mm-hmm. And that was just like two, three months ago. What did he do? He, th- he threw me a birthday, uh, well, congrats party, yeah. um, which actually, he, wait, do you mean physically what he do? Yeah, did he make you squirt? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I think, I mean, that's a, that's a mind fuck for me. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. I'll get there. I'll get there. But I did get your little suction toy. So that's helping. 
Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But then he threw me a secret party. My friend called me pretending to be crying about a boyfriend and I walked over to her house and I walk in and there's just dicks and vaginas everywhere. And there's like a huge come grats sign on the wall. And some of my friends that didn't even know I was having that problem were there. And I was like, Tyler, what are you doing? But it was really, really nice. He threw me a whole party. Yeah. Well, since like, like I remember doing it as a teenager, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. something happened in between and I just lost it. So but he finally some he got kind it. of dark age or not always, yeah. but like, I feel like there's a lot of people with dark ages. Oh I my God. Dark age. Wait, this is the cutest. Congratulations. A on your congrats. Yeah. B on Thank having you. the party thrown for you. Yes. Oh, That's and he amazing. showed up in a song and danced for me and there was money. I don't know. I'm dying. He did a great job. I'm really proud of him. He deserves oh all the awards. I love him. Wait, I have to let Grace in. Now. Show Grace. Come on up. Hey, Grace. Yeah, <laughs> Not about in. it. No. No, yeah. typical cat. She's leaving. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yes, I remember <laughs> you exist. Yes, I love that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, but what I was going to say is I love that your conversation was such like an integral part in you guys getting back together. But yeah. like you said, he was like honored that you shared the information with him. Yeah. No, I mean, and he emotional stuff for him, that was a really hard thing for so long. So like, I think a big rush of emotions happened for him when I told him about that. And that's like things mm-hmm. kicked in, I think, that weren't there before. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And can you imagine if you had gone through with it and then it like looked just like your ex? <laughs> and that other guy with the whole pros list was just like, oh, no, oh, who was I? That would have been so for? awkward. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would have been on the, like the Maury show that. Oh, no, totally. no, 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 no. no we can't Whose kid that. is it? Yeah, no, I lucked out there. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it was all the all the right choices. You know, people were telling me, oh, you might regret it, blah, blah, blah. And not one part of me has questioned that. So it does That's feel awesome. good knowing that I made the right choice. Yeah, there she is. She's here. Now she's looking at the ring light. <laughs> Wonderful. Glamour girl. <laughs> um, that's amazing. And how old are you now? I'm 30 in two weeks. Cool. Yeah. You guys it's been coming. together forever. Yeah, it's yeah. been well, all together it's nine years about. So it's awesome. Yeah, so Love happy. It. And now we're in the position where we can't have kids because the world's on fire. So yeah. Uh, my cousin and I were like, we'll adopt, maybe. Like if I start feeling like really ready, I'm gonna yeah. like, go get one for sure yeah because i mean they're readily here. available yeah. yeah you don't yeah don't have to feel they guilty about us. that part they're gonna get left Ooh, behind if, if everything's on fire so just licking herself right in front of me <laughs> delicious you are a treat she's trying to um, show you new tricks mm-hmm. <laughs> oh congrats beautiful <laughs> yeah right in front of my eyes um re the surgery how was it afterwards uh, um you know Immediately, it was pretty bad. I ended up, we stopped at a KFC and I just puked everywhere. Don't remember much of that. But um, yeah, I got home. My dad gave me some of his muscle relaxers. So that was nice. He really was on top of it. He did a great mm-hmm. job. Um, but yeah, he babied me for a good day or two. But after that, I was, I was fine. I didn't have any like effects that I noticed after that. So I was good. Yeah. And was he like cool about the whole conversation the whole time? Like, yeah, no, he's amazing. He's Absolutely awesome. everything. Well, and he's like, I had one. Well, you know, oh, he had really? had one. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Just which that, <laughs> yeah. It? Yeah. He has gone through it. So, and mm-hmm. which is crazy. I, so I would have loved to have a sibling. So I'm an only child, but, but I'm glad he made the choice when he did. I didn't ask him how old he was though. So I'm, I am interested to find that out. So. Maybe I'll ask him after this. He was excited for me to be on this podcast too. So, oh, wait. And is your dad cis hetero man? Yes. Yes, he okay. is. So, the person yeah. who had gotten a termination was your mom? I don't think so. No, they weren't okay. actually together, my mom okay. and him. He okay. just kept having accidents everywhere and they kept me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was a special was one. So yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. It's like not every accident gets terminated like yeah. some people are like oh yeah no this is the right time yeah exactly yeah i mean if, if cool kelsey's yeah totally i mean if i if we happen to get pregnant again i'm definitely gonna have it mm-hmm. but i'm definitely not gonna try right now either it's too scary but yeah. if it happens it happens so yeah totally i feel comfortable now we're like more financially stable too so it's a yeah, lot better that's good. yeah that's I'm a big one happy to hear when someone is comfy yes very comfy especially now good. yeah <laughs> Um, well, thanks for taking the time to spend the end of the world with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. 
Hopefully it helps somebody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Kelsey, I have to ask you this at the end of a fun experience, which this has been. Um, did you finish? Absolutely. Awesome. Because of you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, You're so Of course. So fucking cool. And thank your dad for us too. Oh, I will. <laughs> thank you both so much. Well, have a great day. All right. You too. See ya. Bye. Bye. Is there a cuter story than that? Like her adorable dad is the one who helped her who by the way she wanted me to tell you he's not like a loaded man like pebble beach was like a very um one-time experience for them and so him paying for the abortion and all that stuff it wasn't just like oh so easy whatever um i just think that is the cutest i think her boyfriend or fiance is like the sweetest thing i've ever heard the fact that he threw her a come grats party like <gasps> i didn't get a come grats part i mean Maybe that's my own fault. I should have thrown it myself. But um, yeah, I, so cute. Thank you, Kelsey, again for sharing your story. You are a dear thing. Um, and yeah, we're so grateful. And um, this next recording, I just wanted to do another little trigger warning for you guys. Uh, it involves a miscarriage. And I know a lot of people who are listening are probably struggling with that. I know I have a lot of friends who have gone through it recently. Um, and so, you know, just brace yourself for that. But it is, it's a really sweet story as well. So excited for you to hear it. Um, before we get to that, though, I just wanted to talk about something that helps me out um, when I am feeling low, and that is therapy. I have been really focusing on my mental health recently, and I'm very proud of myself, I have to say. Um, and if there is anything that's interfering with your happiness or prevents you from achieving your goals, um, BetterHelp is here for you. It will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist who you can connect to in a safe, private online environment. So it's convenient. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, all without ever having to leave your house or sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Um, BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp is available for clients worldwide and offers a broad range of expertise, which might not be locally available in many areas. Um, it's convenient, professional, affordable. It is not a crisis line, um, so it is just it is professional counseling, so know that. Um, and you get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions or send a message to your counselor anytime. I have really enjoyed using BetterHelp. Um, you know me, I don't love leaving my house. Um, I am trying to take up walking a little more because I think it's good to be outside for my brain. Um, but I love having my um, therapist on my phone, having them on call. Monica is awesome. Shout out to Monica. Um, for anything that I need, like I spiral all the time. And instead of spiraling to somebody who is not objective uh, and then having to clean that mess up after, I just do it on my BetterHelp app. Um, sometimes it's not even talking to my therapist. Sometimes it's just writing a journal entry and that is helpful enough for the day. Um, so if you want to start living a happier life today, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash how come. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That is betterhelp.com slash how come for 10% off your first month. Thanks, BetterHelp. I also want to talk about um, something that keeps me really happy in these times, um, I am currently in New York. Ben's not around. He's back in Portland for three months. I am solo dolo, and uh, for that reason, I love Dipsy. Everyone needs an escape, but those can be really hard to come by. Enter Dipsy. Let yourself get lost in a world where good things happen and where your pleasure is the only priority. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. You can listen to stories about hooking up with your hometown crush that you never made a move on. Maybe they're married now. Not in Dipsy's world. Um, you can hook up with a bartender that you've always wanted to in Dipsy world. Or maybe a story that puts you in bed with multiple people um, and you've never done that and you want to. Do it in Dipsy world. Um, they release new content every week, so there's always more to explore no matter who you're into or what turns you on. And if you need to wind down, Dipsy also has wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax before you drift off. 
Um, again, I have been alone. And just because you're alone doesn't mean you stop exploring. Actually, sometimes it's the best time to explore, to really just like get into who you are. And I've been getting into who I am. I've been doing a lot of group sep- sexy dipsies, um, a lot of queer stories um, and experiences that I've never had. And it's lovely to be able to do that and really immerse myself in a world where I can just picture everything going on. You know me, I don't love visual stuff. I'm more of an audio guy. And Dipsy has been a real treat for me. So for listeners of our show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash howcome. That is 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash howcome. I think you will love it. Um, And now, okay, we're going to hear from another companion, and you're just going to love her. We're back. We're back. Hi. Hello. Look at your cute face. Oh, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Uh, We're so excited to have you and somebody who clearly showered today when neither of (laughs) us did. (laughs) Actually, that's false. There's like six days of dry shampoo in my hair. So amazing. yes. Yes. Love to see it. Kaylee, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your story. Your story is yours, but it was also somebody else's. But when was it? What happened? What kind of role did you play? Yeah. So this happened a few years ago. Um, and the story sort of starts with me when mm-hmm. I was 18. So like fresh out of high school, I went to go get on birth control for the first time. And when I was there, they told me that I had some, um, you know, anatomy issues, like with my cervix that may never allow me to become pregnant or, um, have kids. Oh, I got on birth like control. tilted or? Yeah. My, okay. my cervix is like really posterior. My uterus is very tilted. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got on birth control anyways, because I had, um, like heavy cycles and I just wanted to help control that. Mm-hmm. And so fast forward two years later, um, you know, I'm in like a serious committed relationship and I was having this like really heavy bleeding. I really wasn't feeling good. I went into the doctor and they said, oh, you're actually having a miscarriage. So I didn't think that I could get pregnant. I was very shocked. Um, Were you still on the pill at that time? So I actually had an IUD. Okay. Sorry. It was crazy. So like, was the IUD your first birth control then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I like cool. immediately, I was like, I'm not responsible enough to take the pill every day. Yeah. Like, oh my God. This I will hate not it. End well. Yeah. Also it like sucks when like, you're not having sex and every day at like seven o'clock, right. it's like, you're not having sex. <laughs> yes. Swallow me. Yeah. And I was like in college and like had a really busy schedule. I was working two mm. jobs and going to school full time. Like, so I just decided that the IUD was going to work for me. It was supposed to help with heavy periods. And I was like, great, here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, imagine my surprise when they're like, by the way, you're having a miscarriage. Insane. Um, my partner and I were like very, very like upset and distraught. Like I didn't think this was a possibility. And so, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of like really heavy emotions and guilt Mm -hmm. and like, am I ever going to become a mom? And so like six weeks after that, I'm in like a little bit of a better place. Did you think it was something that you had done? Um, I mean, at the time, like I did feel a little bit that way. Looking back on it now, I know like rationally that that obviously wasn't the case. Like stuff like this happens all the time. It was very early. They estimated like maybe around six weeks at the latest. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't like. It also like got around birth control though, which is extremely rare. Oh, absolutely. So I think like you do have little fighters in you. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so yeah, we were definitely feeling like a little more hopeful for the future at that point Mm -hmm. in time. Um, but also, you know, still dealing with the loss of something that happened like really unexpectedly. Yeah. And so like six weeks after that, his sister had called him and said, Hey, you know, like I need to talk to you guys. Um, can we set up a time to like get together? Mm -hmm. So we go and meet with her and she's like, I'm probably like six to eight weeks pregnant with this guy that I'm not like in a committed relationship with. And like, you know, after I slept with him, I sort of discovered that he's kind of an awful person. Mm. I told him about the pregnancy and he sort of said, sorry, you're on your own, like whatever you want to do, but you know, wasn't offering to provide any like 
financial support to pay for anything. And she was like, just moved out on her own into her own There's apartment. There's a different for the vibe, like time. whatever you want to do, I support you and you're on your own, whatever Correct. you want to do. Oh, like, absolutely. It was like, I felt so bad for her. She was like absolutely terrified. She was at like an entry level job with no health insurance. So mm-hmm. she wasn't on birth control. Yeah. She, you know, didn't really know what to do. They came from like a really religious background. And so Mm -hmm. She was grappling with like, oh my gosh, am I really going to have an abortion? Like my family would absolutely disown me if they found out. Mm -hmm. She felt like she could trust us. Um, Um, Yeah. And so I took her. That you wouldn't disown her. Oh yeah, absolutely. We were like, you're clearly not in a place with a supportive partner to like go through with this pregnancy. It's not what you want. Like, or like supportive family or other group of friends. That's like the other thing with this Texas thing, besides like, I think it being woefully illegal is like, it's making people feel so alone now. Yeah. Like they literally have to like go underground and feel like the thing that they're doing is so wrong. Like, even if they didn't grow up in one of those families, now they're like in a state that's saying like, it's so bad. And it's like, I personally, if I didn't have so many people around me being like, Oh my God, it's so fine. I would still feel so bad. Absolutely. And she was like really struggling with it. And like, I also live in a very conservative state. And so there are always protesters outside of the Planned Parenthood in the area we live in, in Idaho. Okay. And so I, I have was to like, let you be Daho. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was just like, I cannot let her go there alone. Like yeah. she already feels bad enough about this. Yeah. Like going to a place where there are these like angry protesting people outside is not like going to be a comfortable situation. Totally. So I took the day off of school and I went with her to her first appointment and I, they wouldn't let me go back with her. And so I sat in the waiting room and waited for her. And then, um, you know, I helped her schedule her second appointment on another day that I could take off of school. So she wouldn't have to go by herself. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually ended up paying for her, abortion because it, there was still like a cost associated with it. She had just moved into this apartment. She's at an entry level job. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, her partner was not providing any sort of like financial. She probably doesn't want to put her name down on any records. Right. And she was just like, this is terrible. So, um, went with her to the second appointment where she actually got the abortion, went Mm -hmm. with her to pick up her prescriptions. And then, um, you know, like we had her over for dinner, we cooked food, we hang out, but like, I think that there's this stigma around like people who have had a miscarriage and it's automatically assumed that like, you're really against like abortions or people who choose not to go through with their pregnancy. Yeah. I had a lot of people. They would be like, Oh, you're so lucky. You should have kept it. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, I would be lying if I didn't say that, like when I see my friends have really like joyous pregnancy announcements, Mm -hmm. that it doesn't make me like a little bit sad, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I absolutely believe in people's right to, um, you know, like accessible healthcare and people who are saying that abortion is not healthcare is they're absolutely wrong. Um, It's insane. Right. I mean, I work in an emergency room and I've seen the opposite side of when people don't go through the right avenues to Mm -hmm. try to have an abortion and how dangerous it can be if it's not done appropriately. So, you know, the fact that I was able to like help her and that she felt comfortable enough coming to us. Like I was proud of her for making that decision because I know how difficult it was for her, uh, especially given the way that she was brought up. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, she, the fact that she unlearned, right. And she was able to, you know, really take, you know, stock and like, her life and her goals and just saying like, you know, maybe now is not the right time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the miscarriages thing too, like why would any person who wants to have a baby want someone else to keep a baby against their will? Like that kind of personality would want the baby to grow up well. Right. I feel unless it's like, oh yeah, no, have the baby so I can have it. And like, no one's saying that. Totally. No one's saying like, I'll take care of the baby. Like when you're talking about those protesters outside of medical facilities, 
I want to like go up to those people and be like, Hey, here's like an orphanage you can donate to. Do you want to foster some kids? Do you want to foster some kids? Here are some food pantries for like starving children who exist right now. Right. Just go as hard for the kids who already exist than the ones like who don't need to necessarily. I also think like it's so great of you for going as a friend and like going and defending her against those people like screaming because uh, I've seen those people before, even in the very liberal states I've lived in. And I saw a tweet the other day, this girl, she lives in New York and she was like, um, I work at one of the healthcare clinics here. And whenever a law like this happens, like there's a huge upsurge in protesters. Right. Um, and we just need people escorting them and taking them in so that they don't feel like so bombarded with like screaming. Totally. Which I thought was crazy that it upticks here too. But like, I mean, it makes sense. Right. You know, I think that they see like, oh, this happened in another state. Like maybe mm-hmm. we can use this as supporting evidence to like spread this elsewhere. And like, honestly, that is absolutely terrifying to me. Yeah. And is absolutely how things spread before is when they capitalize on stuff. So, right. That's why I thought it was important to do this episode too, just because like, there are so many of us who have already gone through this and who don't have the mindset of what I think they think people who have abortions think like. Absolutely. Like, I mean, the decision, I cannot even imagine being in a place, having to make that decision would be, you know, I think really hard for anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I really commend people who realize that like bringing a child into the world just because society is telling you that you need to, like that's not, that's not the totally. way to start your family or become yeah. a parent. Like it, it should be under like happy circumstances where it's wanted, not because it's forced. Yeah. And that's not fair for the child either. It's Nobody really like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that's they're not thinking about that. They're like bringing right. it to the world. And then once they're here, they're like, I don't know, your problem. Yeah. I always think about Freakonomics and like the stats about unwanted kids like being super prone to crime. It's like, right. of course. But so your friend, she was six weeks when she found out she was pregnant, right? Yeah, it was like, okay. I think they said she was like somewhere between six and eight weeks. Like it was very soon after. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing I will say about like, you know, in order for her to actually go and get the abortion, the clinic said, when you leave after your second appointment, you have to leave with some sort of like permanent birth control. So that was the other thing is oh. she was able to get the next plan on, like the little bar that goes in your arm. Mm-hmm like while she was there and we helped her pay for that as well. But like, they weren't just like, okay, here's your abortion. We're going to send you back out into the world with again, limited resources to help protect yourself against yeah. future unwanted pregnancies. They were like, Nope, we'll provide this service for you. But also we want to provide you access to birth control, even mm-hmm. though you're uninsured, even though you don't have necessarily like that means to go see, you know, an OBGYN on a regular basis, like, We're going to give you the birth Mm -hmm. control. You can set up future appointments like, you know, you know, later down the road, if you need like actual like health evaluations or if you need to. Yeah. Like it, it was nice knowing that like she wouldn't have to worry about these kinds of issues in the future. And I could tell that she was really grateful for that as well, knowing Mm -hmm. that she could have some more peace of mind. Yeah. I initially thought you were like, they like forced her on birth control, (laughs) but no, that's good. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like a lot of times people are getting educations for the first time at these clinics too. Right. Um, like I just started watching that show chewing gum. You ever seen that? I haven't. Okay. It's Michaela Cole and she's like from a really Christian background and she starts like, she has like basically like dry hump sex with this guy and like he comes like near her and then she goes spoiler alert you guys it's the first episode get over it um (laughs) it's been out for a while it's been out for a while yeah um but so she uh she goes to get the morning after pill okay the pharmacist is like like are you sure you need this like I don't know how he suspects it but she's like yeah he like came near me and he's like you don't need this like (laughs) (laughs) and she was like about to take like an abortion pill which you know like that's what plan B is um and it fucks with your body and stuff but like it's necessary when there's something in there but like there was no way that there was something in there and like 
she had to have that explained there. And I feel like, I don't know. We know that people's sex ed is fucked up. So like, oh, obviously yes. their reproductive educations are probably not great. Not great. Okay. So she got put on the little thing in the arm. Right. Amazing. And how's she now? Um, you know, I, I have since split up with this partner maybe like a couple years ago. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I don't talk to her as much as I did in the oh, past. Oh, you don't but... still go on walks with yeah. your ex's no. sister? Because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> but, do. um, you know, I do still fault like I'm friends with her on social media and stuff. And she's, you know, doing well. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think even after that, when we had talked about it, she was feeling much better about her situation. And yeah. I just can't imagine where she would be at if she didn't have access to Mm -hmm. have her abortion. Like I, I cannot even imagine. Yeah. And I mean, just to speak to your story a little more, um, because I had a comment said to me the other day that I did not really appreciate. Um, and it was like, I was just like, yeah, like I might have a five-year-old right now. Right. And the person was like, maybe. And I was like, what do you mean? Maybe like I had my abortion five years ago, like right. I'd have the kid. And they were like, I mean, you could have lost it. Like it could have been a miscarriage or whatever. And I was like, "Sorry, do you know how still bad that would have been for me? Because oh, if absolutely. I had made the decision to keep this person growing and had that emotional attachment and been excited for it. And like then it went away. Right. Like that also would have been a loss that impacted my life, impacted my emotional health, you know? Right. I mean, it's, it's absolutely devastating. I actually, this month would have been, um, my baby's third birthday. And so I do definitely think about it. Like I, and I know many others who have had miscarriages who are in the same boat, you know, mm-hmm. like you think about what could have been and where your life might have gone and, mm-hmm. and how things would look differently. It, it really is devastating. Like it's devastating. Yeah. I, especially, I mean, in your case, when like, you've heard that it would never happen and then like right. this, like kind of like one, two punch of like it did, but then it didn't. Right. That is so heartbreaking. And like, I just, I feel for you tremendously that you had to go through that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, I'm in a much better place now, but like I said, I definitely, I think about it frequently and yeah. and later this month that would have been close to um, the due date, you know, I will, I'll probably do something to, mm-hmm. you know, like commemorate uh, their birthday. Like I have in the last couple of years and mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it helps me feel a little bit better about it, but definitely not something to like that comment that, the person made to you is right. totally out of line. Like it's totally crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair. I, I think there's a lot of people in this conversation who aren't thinking about the emotional things that people are actually going through. Absolutely. Because it, it, because people. it is an incredibly rational conversation. Like I right. was very rational about it too. Like, you know, like it wasn't a flippant decision, but it was like, okay, no, this is not what I want right now. But just because it's rational doesn't mean that there's not emotion involved. Totally. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that you can go through, you know, either a miscarriage or abortion, like whatever, whatever it may be, like it's impossible to go through this without having some sort of emotions. They're just like, a lot of feelings. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. And your partner, how was he feeling throughout all of it? Just, Oh, I mean, he was also rightfully devastated um, about the miscarriage and um, you know, he was also very supportive of his sister, which kind of shocked me at first, just given their really conservative upbringing. Right. I forget that he's part of the family. Right. And he's like not a childbearing man. Yeah. Uh, I think it's hard to sort of to conceptualize like, feelings around, um, you know, like childbearing, abortion, miscarriage, the whole thing. But he was incredibly supportive of, of both of us through our separate journeys. And, um, you know, I was really proud of him for, uh, helping Mm -hmm. his sister make that really difficult decision. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she, yeah, she was very grateful to have our support. So. Yeah. I'm grateful for him too. That's really cute. Yes. Yes. Sweet. And the bar is low, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, <laughs> but this is genuinely sweet. 
Um, Kaylee, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys for having me. This was great. Like, I just hope that this story can help someone else realize some of the stuff that, that goes on behind the scenes yeah. that maybe people don't love to share about their journeys. And also, you know, I know that there are a lot of people out there who assume that because I had a miscarriage, mm. I'm like against abortions. And I want that like ideology to, you know, go away just because I was sad totally. about my situation doesn't mean that I want someone else to be forced to have a child. Like, it's just not, Mm-mm. those two things are not congruent. They are not. Kaylee, yeah. I have yeah. to ask you this after a conversation of two people who respect each other. Yes. Um, did you finish? <laughs> Yes, I did. Did you guys finish? We did. Yes, I love that. Okay. I speak for her now. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much for coming. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See, wasn't she great? Um, Okay, wait, this is the last interruption from me, but I just wanted to tell you guys, I'm currently out in uh, Long Island with my little cousin, Lauren, who I think I'm going to do an episode with. We both have fake noses, fake teeth, huge butts. We're both um, into multiple genders. And we also both are allergic to most alcohols. Like we were just talking about how like, uh, she, she asked me, she was like, do you drink? And I was like, not really like not what like normal people drink. She's like me neither. Like, cause I'll, dr- I'll throw up from like two glasses of wine. And I was like, yeah, me too. Um, and so I told her about June shine because I love June shine. It is the thing that has been letting me drink and, and not feel sick after. Um, so June shine is better for you alcohol. It's low carb, full of probiotics, and only has three grams of sugar. They are super transparent about every ingredient they put in their products, which is good. And after drinking, June Shine leaves a lighter, brighter buzz instead of feeling too full after drinking. Um, You can even get it delivered straight to your doorstep with their nationwide shipping. And it's sustainably produced. 1% of all sales are donated also to environmental nonprofits, which I love. And their brewery is powered by 100% renewable solar. Fantastic. I love June Shine. Um, My favorite flavor is the orange mint. It's really, really good. Um, And I like it better than other adult beverages, as I was saying, because I vomit after other adult beverages and I don't drink them because of that. Um, And so I've just kind of like sat out of drinking for the last few years and I'm really excited to jump back in and like feel a little, little cooler or just like, I don't know, a little more involved. It tastes great. It's super light and super refreshing, very bubbly, um, which is nice on the throat. Um, And even people who may not like kombucha will be pleasantly surprised. I don't like regular kombucha. I think it's disgusting, but I love Jumanshine Um, and the occasions when people like to drink like at a happy hour after a weekend workout if you want to cheers I never can cheers with people now I can Um, the delicious and unique flavor combos are amazing again orange mint is my number one but they're all fantastic I I recommend getting like the combo boxes and seeing which one's your favorite Um, their variety pack I think is their best selling thing so great way to try them all. Let me know which ones you like. Um, and I can't wait to have my little cousin try out some and then maybe I'll get her nice and hammered for that episode. Ha ha. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, she, she just shares willingly, which is wonderful. Um, so for our listeners, you can get 20% off site-wide plus free shipping at juneshine.com slash how come or use promo code how come at checkout. That is juneshine, J-U-N-E, S H I N E dot com slash how come. I think you're going to really love it. And this is the last time I am popping in. You are going to hear four more companion stories, which you're going to love. I should do another trigger warning because our last one, um, there is suicidal ideation mentioned. So if anything's anybody's going through that, just know that that is coming. Um, but it has a happy ending and you guys, you're just going to love these last four, um, And if you do, hey, rate, review, and subscribe, buddy. We need you. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we've chatted a few times at least. It's nice to... Besties. Talk to... Yeah, of course. (laughs) Hi, Robin. That has just... Hello. Started scratching. Let me go feed her something. Your cat needs something. Your cat needs something. Yeah. She owns me. always banging. 
<laughs> yeah. It's on brand, right? To be it banging really constantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was banging all last night. It kept me up. Not cute. Not fun. Now you should I get her back. Was, like smacking on a wall, like as a joke. And she like woke up and she was like, we will not be doing that. <laughs> Um, Ilana, thank you so much for joining us and being willing to tell your story. Um, jump in. So uh, I actually had two terminations in my 30s. The cool. first time was um, my first year living in New York, um, all the way from New Jersey. Uh, it was right after Hurricane Trek. Sandy. I know, right? Oh, my God. Um, uh, it was right after Hurricane Sandy. Met this guy. Um, went to his place, we used a condom mm -hmm. and, uh, about five weeks later, I didn't, you know, four or four weeks later, I didn't get my period. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time was a struggling bartender and actor and, um, Planned Parenthood, uh, was my version of like any other, you know, women's health center. Yeah. So, um, I, I went there, got some information and, um, ended up deciding that it was the right thing to do to get this, this termination. Mm -hmm. um, now the confusing part was that we were wearing a condom. I saw the condom the next day yeah. um, and I actually did see semen in it. Um, and unfortunately it didn't work for me. I wasn't on the pill at that time, yeah. but obviously like I did my best to be safe and unfortunately it didn't 100%. work in that circumstance. Um, so that, that was pretty scary. And thankfully, like I did have the opportunity to, you know, get this abortion. I don't know what I would have done back then. Obviously I was out of a job because my bar was closed because mm -hmm. of Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, know, that's like, you've just seen like the subways overflowing with water and you're like, yeah, I'll go make my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it wasn't like I was planning on like, I had met this person once before, you know, yeah. I guess you could call it a one night stand. I, you know. It was the second night stand, but you know, there, there was no, I, I, we weren't together. There was, mm -hmm. and I did my best, you know, like I did what I was supposed to do. Totally. Right? I, condoms I wore great. protection. Right? Yeah. And then what you, you did what you were supposed to do the next time, which is figure out if you were pregnant and figure mm -hmm. out your options and take care of whatever right. you needed to do. Right. Um, what was crappy about the situation was I got the, the, the termination and I still wasn't getting my period two months later oh, ended shit. up going back. Yeah. So I ended up going back and apparently there were some tissues that were still left over. So two months later I had to go back and have a second DNC what? to clean everything out. Yes. Why? Cause so your body just like thought it was still pregnant. Probably. It basically was like, they hadn't taken enough out of the tissue, uh, taken enough of the tissue out for it to be deemed like completely cleaned out. And so because uh -huh. it still had a little bit of that tissue left over, I was still technically pregnant, I guess you could say. So, um, so they had to do a second DNC to clean everything out. So that's okay. like two DNCs basically in a matter of like two months. I don't know how much you know about the second bundle of cells, but if it had gone uncared for or whatever, would it have turned into a child? No, 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 okay. no absolutely not. No. Okay. But it would have fucked with your hormones. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But I, yeah, I mean, I'm my just body thought to I wonder would, yeah. what people, you know, in red States, not people, lawmakers would make of this second little non-human in your body. Would they be making like some argument that it has a heartbeat, even though it like probably did not clearly pass. doesn't, right? Yeah. I mean, well, if they're saying six weeks in Texas, which is just a bundle of cells, mm -hmm. would the second time also be a bundle of cells that I wouldn't be able to clear out of my body? Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess, I mean, I, I really don't know. Interesting. So after the first one, were you so that was a at all? No. And okay. you know what? The funny thing, I felt great. I did too. I, it was, I had like, and I was energized. I don't know. It was yeah. super weird, super weird. My OBGYN told me too. She was like, you're going to feel really good after this because I don't know about you, but I had like really bad morning sickness and cramps and all that stuff. And she mm -hmm. was like, all of it's going to be gone, gone right after. And so yours was a surgical one. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I never wanted to do the pill. I mean, it's just, it sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like a lot. And pain. Like I yeah. don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Just put me out. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I didn't ask to do this. <laughs> no, I don't want, I mean, none of us want to do it, you know, <laughs> like you do it because you have to. Yeah. But so that was 32 years old. Okay, cool. And so then how many weeks between that? And it was like, are you just like super regular that you were like 
Mm, my period's totally regular. Okay. I mean, I could, I know exactly when it's coming. Use the apps, use a calendar, like on point. See, there was like a tweet floating around that was like, only whores wouldn't know they were pregnant at six weeks. And I was like, no, I feel like most people like would not know because no. I, I'm not very dedicated to tracking my period. Like yeah, I'm just, yeah. When it should be, but it's never right. like right then. It's like give or take. I don't know. Could mm-hmm. be- oh yeah. I mean, like I know plenty of people, a ton of my friends who are just like, oh, whenever it comes, it comes. I don't know. You know, yeah. and that's, that's normal. That's totally normal. She's here. Hold on. <laughs> Grace is actually the CEO. Of Come on in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he comes Come into in. the room and we stop what we're doing. Come in. Yeah. It's great. She's being so weird and so annoying and attention seeking. <laughs> All right. So then it is four weeks later or something. Mm-hmm. And you're like, or probably know. around there or, yeah. or, I, to be honest, I can't remember how long. I mean, it could have been right before my period and I would have been waiting longer. Mm-hmm. I, I just remember thinking that I was a week late. And, and did they tell you how common or uncommon this is? So on the box of condoms, it says what, like 99.6% effective. It is mm. not. That is a lie. It's more like in the 80s or something like that. No, but I no. mean, for the oh. sec, the to have an abortion and then to have remaining cells. That oh, just... um, I don't think they really mentioned to me how common, I mean, I guess they kind of fucked up a little bit, you know, I don't remember them mentioning how common it is. I'm sure it's happened before, but yeah, no, I'm sure it's yeah. happened before. I've just never heard yeah. of it, which is, yeah. Yeah. And for like us also, it's like, it was my first one. It was my first termination. Like, and then to yeah. have to like do it again a second time. I'm like, yeah, you know. it sucks. Yeah. And then is that, it after that uh, as far as like determinations that I have no, this is this is no one. so yeah okay. so that was 1a and 1b <laughs> okay so the second one was um 2008 mm-hmm. I was seeing someone for a month I guess I would say at this point mm-hmm. my mom passes away and while I'm sitting shiva mm-hmm. I'm feeling my boobs are getting tender. I'm starting to feel nauseous. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This is not happening to me right now. And I went and took a pregnancy test. And lo and behold, I'm here, you know, mourning my mother's death. And I find out that I'm pregnant, God, which is like a whole barrel of like, oh, my God, is this a sign from my mother? Am I supposed to be keeping this baby? Because at this point, I'm already 38. Baby, my mom. I know, right? Yeah. This is my mother reincarnate. Like this is the yeah. spirit of my mother. <laughs> yeah. And uh and I so that my dog was like, the week my grandfather died. And I was like, it's my dog, it's my grandfather. He's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Roof, yes. Um yeah. yeah, no. So uh, you know, I told him he almost like didn't believe me. Mm-hmm. Um he was Balchuva which is like one of his, uh, like a, almost like it's born again, Christians for Jews. So okay. someone who returns back to the faith, sometimes they're a little more stringent than even mm-hmm. like religious Jews are mm-hmm. because they're like making up for lost time. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't believe you. I don't believe this pregnancy test, go get a blood test. So I went and got a blood mm-hmm. test and lo and behold, I mean, like, look, I know my body. I miss a period. I'm pregnant. Yeah. Like there's no yeah. question about it. So I went and got one and that w- this w- it was really, really hard for me, really hard because Mm -hmm. of course I was battling with like, this is something that at 38 I've been wanting to do and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, feel like I've, I'm a little late to the game and want to connect it with this spirit in some way, because that maybe has something to do with my mother. Like all these thoughts were going through my mind. And so I, not only was I mourning the death of my mother, but I was mourning the death death of this, this potential child that Mm -hmm. could be. Oh, it's so tough. And he doesn't sound like he was like super emotionally supportive. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Hate that. So glad that you're not with him anymore. Mm -hmm, Um, Me too. Was he at all any part of the termination or? He he took me that morning Mm -hmm. um, and then took care of me for the weekends. Although again, after this one also felt amazing. So, um, you know, um, didn't really need him, but like as a support system, and this is supposed to be my partner, I guess, like, you know, Mm -hmm. he should, he should have been there. So yeah. Yeah. And are you still happy with your decisions? 
Oh, absolutely. I'm 15 weeks pregnant now with my fiance. Um, this is the way I know. Thank you. Thank you. So exciting. (laughs) And this was the way that it was supposed to be for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a choice a long time ago that I did not want to be a single parent, just like my mother was. Mm -hmm. That wasn't an option for me. Would have been a very hard life by myself without support of a person, without financial support. I mean, Mm And I shout don't know out to where the people who do it. Like you guys are amazing. Absolutely. But also shout out to the people who decide not to do it because it wouldn't just be making your life tougher. You'd be bringing in a little child who'd be like, come on, you knew you couldn't handle this. Yeah. And it got There's rid so of much. that schmuck. Yeah, kind of. exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we've been talking about religion with a bunch of other people on this episode, I'm glad that we have somebody to speak to Judaism with because that is one of the things that I've been seeing there was some tweet that was like, oh, yeah, if you don't allow abortion, um, you don't allow me to practice my religion as a Jewish person. Yes. Because in Judaism, the woman or the uterus owner um, is not simply a host. They are the more important being. Um, so if there are any complications with the baby or the, maybe the baby's not wanted or whatever, um, that it is more important for that person, their life is more important. Yes, Um, that is absolutely. Judaism does support abortion for the safety of the mother, for the safety mm -hmm. of the family, whether it be mental or physical. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, Judaism does support abortions. Mm -hmm. Not that I would ever be like, hey, America, let Jewish religion as like a constitutional thing. But like, I don't think any religion should do that. And like, right. Yes, we're a puritanical society, but like, I I don't remember who the clip was, but some woman was like, I don't care about your religion. Like you, I, I care about your ability to practice it to the best of your ability, but I don't have to care about it or like make it my laws. Like if you don't want to get an abortion, don't get an abortion. Well, that's the difference between diversity and inclusion, right? Yeah. 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 We can be diverse, but it's not until you practice it that it's actual inclusion mm-hmm. or allow people to practice it that it mm-hmm. is inclusion. Mm-hmm. Totally. Oh my God. I love, and how far are you along now? I'm 15 weeks. Oh, actually, sorry. 16 weeks yesterday. Cool. So I'm four months. Yeah. Cool. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so exciting. I know. I know. I know. And it's amazing to have someone as a support system who, you know, touches your belly and talks to this baby and, mm-hmm. you know, we, we can talk about all the wonderful things that we're going to do and how our lives are going to be so different, but yeah. So fun. Are you still in New York? I actually moved to San Diego. Cool. Yeah. I unofficially moved here in December and officially we just bought a house. We just moved in on Friday. Congratulations. And yeah. Thank you. San Diego's a lot. Me me and San Diego are still feeling feeling each other out, but. Go see the little um, fat seals down at La Jolla. Oh yeah. Best time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Me and then we can talk for a little while. They're yeah. so cute. Yeah. Okay. You're awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Um, yeah, of course. We really appreciate it. I have to ask you this question after a fun experience between two people, which this has been. Um, Ilana, did you finish? I did finish. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Remy. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Robin. And, uh, we'll, we'll chat online. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see you soon. <gasps> Bye. Bye. Noel, welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm freaking wonderful. Oh How my are God, you? I'm so glad. We're we're great. <laughs> so nice to have you. I'm happy to be here. You know what we're talking about today? Tell us your story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not actually my story. It's my mom's mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's actually had two abortions. Um, so mm-hmm. The first one, it was because um, my parents, my bio mother and my bio father were technically separated, Mm -hmm. um, but the judge that was doing their divorce ended up retiring in the middle of it. And so it accidentally took them two years to legally get divorced. Okay. Um, Okay. And because my dad wasn't the nicest person um, when she got pregnant by 
uh, the other guy that she was dating, um, the legally in our state, the person you are married to is on the birth certificate, no matter who the father is. Um, so my toxic That's dad crazy. would be on the birth certificate. Yeah. And since, of course, she didn't want to continue that, um, she decided to have an abortion. What state? Georgia. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. And yes. you were born before that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in order to avoid um, continuing that relationship with him and trying as hard as she could to distance herself from him with two kids already, um, she just went ahead and had an abortion. And looking back, it probably saved her a good decade of toxic, you know, relationships and stuff with that with him. Toxic human. <laughs> yeah. Glad we got um, away from him. But also, like, that abortion was necessary for the legal battle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So they when they got divorced, the um, judge that was assigned to their case actually retired in the middle of it. Um, so it accidentally took kind of two years, even though they were already separated. Um, and of course, that would have put the divorce in an even harder position to finalize if they legally had a baby together, where th- whether they didn't actually or not. And the law is whoever you're married to, mm-hmm. even if it's not their kid, mm-hmm. they're on. It the was person. at the time. I don't know if it still is. They may have changed that. Hopefully, they did for anybody that is out there dealing with that. Yeah. But at the time, about 20 years ago, yeah, that was the law. Robin's looking at the laws in Georgia right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. And then her second one, it was actually ectopic, which. Um, I don't know how much people know but that's like life threatening. It will kill you. Um, Ectopic so- pregnancy, you guys, mm. is when your egg gets fertilized like outside of the uterus. I think it's like in the fallopian tubes. In the tubes. fallopian tubes, yeah. And so it'll like kill you. And of course, the the pregnancy is useless. So they decided to have an abortion. Pregnancy is moot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So they decided to have an abortion so that at least it could save her life. And in these new Texas laws that are going in, it's been a big topic lately, but even um, a few of the other laws in the other states, there's no exceptions for anything like that. So we're putting a couple of cells over um, worth over that woman's life. Yeah, would have exploded that, killed her, killed the baby. Yeah. Um, how old were you around when that happened? Um, so both of these happened before I was five. So the first one, I think I was about three. And then the next one happened pretty shortly after that, actually. So about a year after that. And it, was that with him again? Yeah, it, oh, okay. it was with the um, person she was dating. Yeah, right. it's not okay. his. Sorry, right. I'm like out to lunch today. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It <laughs> says that... Establishing paternity for a child in Georgia may be done in one of the following ways. Um, The child's parents are legally married to each other at the time of a child's birth. Unwed Mm -hmm. parents sign a paternity acknowledgement form, um, either like when the kid's born or they can do it at the state office later or by court order. um, If it's like divorce, decree, separation agreement or other some form of order. So it's still if they're married. Mm -hmm. It's just such a weird crazy like own your wife and anything she makes law you know literally yeah and it's and especially because we are part of that deep south it is very much to cover up um outside of marriage pregnancies infidelity Mm -hmm. um infidelity and such like that because if you're legally married here in these states you are considered together whether you're together or not yeah. Was she like super open with you about all of this? Oh yeah. Since we were like, since I was a kid, we were really open about stuff like that because she did want me to be raised in a um, household where there's these things could be talked about. And I wasn't, um, if I was ever in her position, then I knew I could turn to her for help because she's been there. Um, yeah. 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 So she was always really open about everything. We, we grew up in a sex positive household too. So mm-hmm. how did how did she get them? Like, did she have a support system? Where did she go? Um, To be honest, I think, I believe both of them were at Planned Parenthood and she didn't, at the time, she really wasn't open about them because mm-hmm. she does come from a very Christian family. 
um, who probably wouldn't have approved of her doing them either way. And especially because, you know, the whole marriage thing in Christianity is a really big deal. Um, so that first one would never have been allowed if she had told mm -hmm. her family. And so it only came out that she had them a few years after they even happened. So there was, I guess, no going back um, in her thought process. So it didn't really matter what the family said because it's already happened. Totally. I feel like we've had like a lot of people who've grown up religious and that's how they feel with like sexuality sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I broke the seal. I had the sex. Like, let's just have sex now. I'm sorry, God. Exactly. Okay. So she went alone or? Um, yeah. So she okay. went alone for the first one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for the second one, um, my stepdad, my current stepdad, who was the man, the father of both of those, um, went with the second one. And how does he feel about it? Like, does he ever talk to you guys about it? Yeah. Um, he says that he was actually kind of blessed because he never really wanted kids of his own. Mm -hmm. um, and so when he found my mom and, you know, she had a kid, um, he was like, wonderful. <laughs> you know, it came with the package. Um, so then when she had the abortions, it was really her choice. Like he was like, I'm not going to raise this baby. I'm not building this baby from scratch. So that's on. Yeah, I'm not growing it. Mom. Yeah. So he was pretty cool with it. He was really supportive and he took really good care of her throughout the entire thing. And they're still together 20 years later. And they, but they did have another kid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. How does he feel about that? What happens happens. He likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. He was like, if you want to keep it, then we're keeping it. And it was always my mom's choice. That's amazing. Yeah. And then after the egg topic pregnancy, um, he got a vasectomy because he was like, we're not going to kill you. That's not happening. Like, we're not going to allow that again. So he just went ahead and, and eliminated the uh, possibility of her having another ectopic pregnancy. So it was me, first abortion. First abortion, brother, brother ectopic abortion. pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, if your brother is a vasectomy baby... <laughs> Whoa. Definitely and not. And a post-ectopic pregnancy <laughs> baby. He's a miracle waiting to have. No, yeah, like, <laughs> save this kid at all costs. He's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. He's wonderful. But no, he's not. He's not a miracle. Okay, great. Okay, great. <laughs> no, I, I, I love this story. I love your family dynamic. I love that she was so open with you guys and that your stepdad was too. Yes. Um, it feels like it bodes well for the future in a lot of ways because you can see somebody in such like a strict universe yeah. person hating state, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, because they established openness so early, any question that I had, no matter how off the wall, they would never um, give me a half explanation. They would always give me a full explanation as much as I could understand, you know, at my age range or whatever. Um, and that created a lot of trust between all of us. Um, mm -hmm. So we could legitimately come to them for pretty much anything. Um, and there was never a dynamic of like, oh my gosh, um, I'm going to get in trouble with my parents. It was always, I need to call my parents first. Yeah. Um, and I, I definitely think that that has saved me in a lot of things. And it's kept, it's kept me from having to do some of the things that my mom did when, you know, your parents don't talk to you about things and you don't know things, mm -hmm. um, then these pregnancies do happen and stuff like that. And then where do you go from there? So it kind of kept me out of a lot of those things because I knew a lot about it when I was young. And you haven't had an abortion mm -mm. because nope. she learned about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because also, I, I mean, I learned about it too and I still needed one. So that's, <laughs> that's, fair. that's very fair. I mean, I guess I was pregnant on accident one time um but that was kind of taken care of for me and it didn't last very long so luckily I I haven't needed one but yeah is that emotional for you at all um to be honest not exactly because I didn't even really know I was pregnant until the miscarriage happened and I was like oh something's wrong you know mm -hmm. um but in in a lot of these new laws that would probably um put me in in some legal trouble since I didn't know um yeah, yeah. and so for me it wasn't you did too homicide Noel mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't too emotional at the time um but once that fear did set in of like oh my gosh if anybody finds out like I could be in trouble um that 
that was kind of scary for a little while. But of course, I went to my mom pretty immediately and we looked up the laws and we looked up ways to avoid it and stuff. And we were fine, I think, in our state. But yeah, if I were in a couple that of other insane. states, that would have been it a problem. Is, like all of this is insane. But like when you just get down to the nitty gritty details of it, like mm -hmm. that you were like, oh, miscarriage. Oh, logical next step isn't to like take care of myself. It's like to make sure I'm legally fine. <laughs> yeah yeah Blows my because mind. so it wasn't too emotional at the time but it was scary for sure yeah we had somebody else that we spoke to and she went through a miscarriage that she didn't know that she was pregnant and like hers mm -hmm. was emotional so it is nice to hear that yours isn't in that way because there are yeah we're, we're not a monolith um <laughs> yeah and I mean too I think um pregnancy holds different weight for different people so for me I don't know that I ever want kids. So when the mm -hmm. miscarriage happened, it was kind of like, okay, like I'm still young and I'm still deciding if I even want kids. So it was probably for the best. Whereas I do think if another person has a miscarriage and they do want kids or it does hold a lot more weight to them, then definitely they would have a, a more emotional experience with it. Totally. How old were you at the time? 19. Yeah, that's young as fuck. Also, yeah. if you don't want kids, that. don't make kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, this has been so fun, even though the topic sucks. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't. Like they should it should just be like getting um I don't know, getting your nails done, get an abortion. Yeah. Um <laughs> I agree with that. I'm gonna go get my hair done, get an abortion later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my hair done, get an abortion. <laughs> Baby, how you feeling? I'm fine. <laughs> it's all fine. Um Noel, thank you so much for being here and sharing um, thank you so much. your story and your mom's story and thank her for mm -hmm. us too. Um, mm -hmm. Have to ask you this after an experience, which this has been. Uh, Noel, did you finish? All over the place. Yay. <laughs> did you finish? I did. Thank you so much for asking and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Bye. Bye. Hi. Hello. Hello. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you Hi. for doing this. Thank you for having me here. Well, I'm happy to, I'm, it's unfortunate that the way that we have to talk about this, but I'm happy that, that we're all here to talk about it. Yeah, us too. Very grateful that you're willing to share your story with us. Do you mm -hmm. want to just get going on that and let us know what were the circumstances and what happened? I yeah, so um, I just want to say before I say anything else um, in this interview that I will be speaking about my me being supportive of my friend who did have an abortion a couple okay. of years ago. Uh, she did give me consent to talk about this. Uh, she's cool. totally she knows the surgery is happening right now. She's going to listen when it's done. She has asked me to keep her identity anonymous though throughout this, so I'm not going to be revealing cool. her name or anything like that. Um, so. Basically, the way that I came into the situation is that we had been friends for a couple of years. Uh, she was 19 when she had her abort. Uh, she's a cisgender straight woman, by the way. I don't know if mm -hmm. that's important for context. Mm -hmm. um, she was 19 when she had her abortion, and I was 20, and I'm 22 now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is happening in Arizona. And um, to save a bunch of time without going into a lot of detail, we're one of the strictest states where abortion is performed. Um, in right. 2019, especially, a lot of laws were passed. And in April of this year, our governor made it a crime for a healthcare provider to perform an abortion after 20 weeks, even if it was deemed medically necessary, which that's a whole other conversation. Oh. I'm not going to go on about that. But the right. way that, yeah. um, but Fuck. so this happened in yeah, big sigh from a collective sigh <laughs> from mm -hmm. women or people with uteruses. Um, but the yeah. way that this ended up happening, um, I'll give I'll give a trigger warning for viewers. I'm not going to go into graphic detail about how she was assaulted, but I'm going to share some details because mm -hmm. it is important for how I, everything plays out. So her rapist, unfortunately, was actually a very close friend of hers, and <laughs> her family is yeah. Um, her family is very religious. Um, I used to be religious, so that was one of the things that we bonded <laughs> over when we became friends. Um, and what type so of religious? Just shared that with each other. I'm sorry. What type of religious? I asking. was raised Catholic and she was raised Christian. I am. Okay. I became an atheist when I was 14. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but her family is still very religious. Mine, my, my father is, but my mom's really not. Um, but that was something that we bonded over when we became friends. 
And unfortunately, um, like I said, her rapist was a friend of hers, a very close friend of hers at the time. And the way that things ended up happening is that she had ended a relationship with someone previously. And mm -hmm. that it, I don't even remember the exact details on why that relationship ended. But she called him for mm -hmm. basically saying, hey, going through a breakup. Uh, do you want to come over and just hang out? Like, I feel like oh, shit, God. like let's chill and everything. And he said, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, she was she was living with her family at the time. They were not there. It was the two of them. And the thing that and this infuriates me that a lot of people don't believe her that she was raped because like people knew him in our friend group mm -hmm. that eventually ended up finding out about this. I don't think a lot of people understand. Sometimes rape happens very secretly behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know the person very well, which is really unfortunate. And that's sadly what happened here. I feel like it's most um, times that we're yeah. Yeah. like figuring out. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really, I think sometimes, particularly men, I think view rape as this very like obvious thing that just somehow we magically, when it does happen as if it doesn't happen all the time, which it does, but like, I think they view it as like, oh, why didn't we see it? Or why didn't you have witnesses or mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And it's like, <laughs> it just, it just also, doesn't work out like that. Not everybody has the correct definition of what it is. Some people think it's only when it's violent and it's like, no, coercion is and yeah. um, manipulation is and doing it with somebody that you're already dating, even when they don't want to, still is. And also, why um, would you be I, in the room? That's so yeah. weird. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's insane. And again, I could go on a whole tangent about how that played out, but unfortunately... This person, um, and I can I can talk about this. She actually ended up taking legal action against this person. This person is serving time now, thankfully, for what happened. Oh my to her. god! Uh, but this that yeah, is so, rare. Yay. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. her her preg her eventual pregnancy ended up actually being evidence to point to the fact that this Holy did, did happen shit. to her. Yeah. So it was it was a whole thing, but unfortunately, and again, I'm not going to go into a bunch of graphic detail, but yeah. he came over, she was telling him about her breakup and situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that he thought it would be a fantastic idea when she was in this very vulnerable, vulnerable state position. with him yeah. to be like, Hey, I'm going to make you feel better. Um, and not ask you if it's okay. So he went in to kiss her and she was very much like immediately, like, I appreciate that you care. I don't personally want that. And unfortunately, after that, he assaulted her. Um, and yeah, um, I after she, it happened to her, she called me three days after it happened. Um, I don't personally know what she did the rest of the day that it happened. Not that it's any of my business, but she ended up calling me three days later um, because she was not on birth control at the time. Um, and she was afraid because he did not use um, a condom when it happened. And she was afraid of that, course. of course, that she was pregnant. Yeah. And she, the thing is about, and for our listeners, the thing is she was 19 at the time. So in the state of Arizona, if you are a minor and you're under the age of 18, you have to have parental consent to have consent. any type of abortion. Yeah. I didn't know that Arizona was this crazy. Like how you said it's from 2019, but like, have they always been this way yes unfortunately okay. um and I, we could I, I could write a whole book about my own personal experience in this but like especially um i i started studying sexuality and like safe sex practices when i was 14 when i was still in a very religious environment mm -hmm. um and that again that could be a whole topic for a whole other day but uh i'm actually part of the reason she came to me is that in my group of friends at the time i was the only one talking about mm -hmm. sex and like how it can be something that can be enjoyed and mm -hmm. that it you doesn't have shame to mean you're scared of baby yeah mm -hmm. and unfortunately sometimes i've been in this position where something unfortunate happens to a person i care about and they don't know where to go at first so she called me and she oh. explained everything um, and the very first thing I told her is like, I want you to know, none of this is your fault. Like if anyone is ever like, none of it, You're like such a little ask, angel like, hub. Yeah. <laughs> like the fact that multiple people have come to you is like really awesome. And that you've been able to help them. Like I, I knew a lot of that when I was really young, fortunately. And I got to learn about like, when I, when 
when I tell people I was studying sexually like young, I think they imagine 12 year old, 14 year old me like watching porn for the first time. I actually didn't watch porn until I was 17. Okay. Like that's the crazy part. You were just like diving um, into books? But I was studying. Yes. Um, I was alone studying like a lot of the science behind. Yes. I was doing it in secret. Um, my mom, I, she found out eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that movie very, very Too hard. Much. Um, yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot, thankfully, about like how things are consensual, how, Mm -hmm. you know, you can, sex isn't just between a man and a woman. It can literally be between any two or multiple humans at the same time. And you don't have to worry about having a baby during that. Sometimes you can't even, because maybe they both have the same genitals or whatever, Mm -hmm. blah, 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 all these, the very big world of it. And I didn't talk about it at first because I was in a religious environment. Like I went to a private religious school and everything at the time. Like I was, it was something that had always intrigued me, but I Mm -hmm. was ashamed to talk about it for a long time, which is part of why I enjoy being so open about it now. So after I went to a public high school where I met my friend, um, it was something I was really open about because a lot of my friends at the time didn't know what the birth control pill was or that you could Mm -hmm. get plan B and you didn't need, at least in the state of Arizona, you don't need a prescription. Some states do need a prescription for plan B, but like, they didn't even know that that was a thing. And you know what? I've had to use plan B. (laughs) Yeah. I hope my mom is. (laughs) Um, but back to where that, so they, they knew about it and she knew that I knew things about it. And because she was afraid that she was pregnant, uh, she mm-hmm. was like, I don't even know where I would start because the other thing about her family is they're not only very religious, but they're extremely controlling. Uh, mm-hmm. if she did leave the house, she would have to ask for permission. Um, even like, just like really minor things like meeting for coffee. It was insane. Wow. Um, and they, they could see, like, they had, like, I don't know if this is still a thing with most phone plans, but, like, they could see who she was calling and, like, if she was, like, time stamps, like, texting people, like, they were very on top of that. And another thing that they were very... No trust of the child in this family. family. Yeah. Even though yeah. she's 19 and an adult. Yeah. And yay. <laughs> um, what was the last thing you said? But, was she, they... Uh, the, they were also very like on top of like health insurance. And that comes into mm-hmm. this because she was like, uh, immediately she was telling me first, I told him like, first, it's not your fault. You have options. I'm supportive of whatever option you want to do. it if you are pregnant and she immediately said, if I am pregnant, I I'm having an abortion, but I need to know how to do this safely mm-hmm. and discreetly mm-hmm. because uh, sometimes sometimes, with certain I, Planned Parenthood ended up being like a really great partner and what happened with her. But she did not know at the time that if she went to like a different place or even if she went there, if she did use her health insurance, if her parents would be able to know about it, if they were like, she went into this completely without mm-hmm. any knowledge prior. And honestly, I didn't have a lot of knowledge at the time. I learned a lot about how abortion works as a whole, but especially in Arizona at this time. Yeah. So what ended up happening is that, you know, let's, we'll talk about like the six, feet, like, I'm sure we're all aware this, this whole six feet thing in Texas, it's like literally the size of a, of an, em- I'm not even going to say a fetus, an embryo at the six feet point is literally the great, a grain of rice. Like imagine a grain of rice. I couldn't have that mine removed of- at five weeks. They had to, they made yeah. me wait until seven, I think. Yeah. We ended up, she, it was like this big constant, like, we, first of all, we kept it secret. Like she was in college at the time. And I told her, I'm like, no other human being will know about this. The only other person who will know about this is whatever doctor or whoever you see. I didn't speak to anybody else about this. Mm-hmm. So we were just kind of like on a time clock. She had a very irregular cycle. So it wasn't just like, oh, we'll just wait for when your period doesn't come. It was literally like, it take, we were waiting for like the right time to do it. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to do this without a paper trail for her parents. So we, I'm trying to figure out, remember. Did you guys just take like a bunch of pregnancy tests? Yeah, she was, it got a little excessive and it it was, it ended up being a big trigger for her at one point because she was taking them every night. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I'm like, again, we don't even know. And you know what, if you are, again, we will figure it out. Everything's Mm going to be okay. Um, but I told her to just like, you know, just like, we're going to take a step back and no matter, no matter what, we will figure it out. So she ended did up finding the, actually at about the, yes. Did the Sorry, tests all come back positive? Like, 
uh, for the first couple of, so the thing is with um, pregnancy tests that you buy in the drugstore, they're looking for a certain hormone that's released at a certain time in pregnancy. Uh, and I honestly don't even remember. I think that sometimes they were inconclusive mm-hmm. or something like that, but she ended up getting confirmation from a practitioner um, because she ended up going to a like little mini clinic or something like that. And she was like, Oh, I have a cough and a cold because she was like, maybe that can be disguised under health insurance, like a CVS minute clinic, that type of situation. Um, And yeah. And she ended up saying to the practitioner there, she's like, Oh, I may believe that I'm pregnant. And they ended up like testing her Mm. and she did find out that she was pregnant. Whoa. So not only did it, yeah, it was something like that. So she called me immediately afterwards and she's like, I have proof, like I'm pregnant, like, and I don't want this to happen, which was her every right. Mm-hmm. So now our next step, and I informed her of this because she's like, I want to make an appointment today. I, w- I want to figure this out today. Like, like I can't, I won't go through this. I'm like, we will figure this out. But I informed her really quickly. I asked her, like, do you, if you don't want to take legal action, I completely understand because, you know, Mm -hmm. like rape trials, they're long, Mm -hmm. they're exhausting, they're expensive. Not Mm -hmm. everyone has money for a lawyer. Um, And, you know, these pregnancy tests are expensive. One pregnancy test a night for like two weeks, they're like 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, Or even if you go to the dollar store, like, not everyone has the budget to, like, Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Yeah. (laughs) And not everyone has, access to a practitioner like she did like it's just like, everything like about it's like even outside of texas when people try to demonize people with vaginas or uteruses being like oh you are a murderer mm-hmm. or like this like you made this decision so easily sometimes it's an extremely tough road for a person who may totally. be contemplating an abortion absolutely totally. um for her it was obviously still a difficult road but she didn't have to sit there for weeks and I'm being like, should I should not do this immediately? She's like, I'm doing this. I won't do this. I just don't know how to do this yet. Mm-hmm. So after her pregnancy was confirmed, I asked her if she wanted to pursue legal action against her rapist. She knew where he lived. She knew his name. Um, mm-hmm. They hadn't seen each other since that event occurred. They were not speaking at all. Um, and again, we were the only two people who knew about this going on. Mm-hmm. And at first she was hesitant. Um, and I'm like, okay, I asked, I'm asking you this because there's DNA, like his DNA is mm-hmm. in that embryo. And, you know, this is a form of proof that unfortunately this happened to you. So if mm-hmm. you want to take legal action, this is a very big part of that. And you may have to wait a little longer in that case of however that works. So she ended up did wanting to pursue legal action. She's like, you know what, we have this, I hate that this happened, but you know, like let's, let's use it to my advantage. So the way that that ended up working is that, um, and I'll show this for viewers as well. Part of the abortion laws in Arizona in this case is that regardless of whether you're a minor or you're 40 and you're having an abortion, you are required by a, like a medical doctor or a practitioner, you are required to have an ultrasound to have a medical practitioner Mm. look at your uterus and to see what's going on in there. And they're required to offer a picture of it for you to see like what's going on in there. It's literally this process that's like designed to be like, look at this thing that you're killing. Look Mm -hmm. at you, you bad, bad person. Like Or just play with your emotions too, because every other time we've seen like a sonogram, it's like for a a wanted baby. Yeah. Um, I actually, I've been watching the L word and they just had this scene where one of the women goes to get an abortion and she goes to a place where they say that they're available, but then it's one of those places where like they are not and they show you the sonogram and then they show you like, this is the baby, whatever. And the woman had to be like, get the fuck off of me. Like I'm getting out of here because there are places, I think we've, we've talked about this on an episode, but that will trap you into thinking that this will be a safe space yes. for you to talk about your options. Um, and it's not. But it seems like it's the whole like state that. of Arizona. Actually, you know, on that note, so I'll give some, shed some light on this. So I was reading up on this last night to make sure I had the most up-to-date information um, for this interview today. Mm-hmm. There are only four Planned Parenthood locations in the state of Arizona. There's Whoa. currently two in the central Phoenix area. I'm fortunate that I live four miles from one. Um, and that location that's near a lot of people, 
who live in this area of the state, there's literally that type of women's clinic right next door to it where they will try to lure these very vulnerable people who may not even be there for an abortion. They may not even be pregnant. Mm -hmm. They're trying to lure them in to this facade of like, oh, like having, and like, you know, I'm a person it's like, I do believe like if a person wants kids and they truly want that for themselves, they have every right to do that. And it can be this magical, amazing yeah. thing for a person. And I, and I would love to be a mom. I'm only in my twenties, but like, I would love to be a mom one day. And I talk about having babies with my friends all the time, but you know, that's not everyone's story. Not everyone mm-hmm. wants children and it's not always the right decision for someone to have children. Yeah. And you know what? That's no one else's damn business. And we need to stop shaming people for making whatever decision they see fit for themselves. Also, we need the people who are benefiting from abortions to, to start, you know, joining the fight. Exactly. Because um, uterus owners aren't getting pregnant alone. Yeah. Takes to the tango, buddy. I saw this thing that was going around. I think it was on Twitter. Mainly was where it started that someone was like a uterus could have 100 partners in a day but only one of them could get pregnant if if she was yes but if a person with a penis has sex with 100 people who have a uterus and they're fertile in that time span then that's That's 100 100 people potentially pregnant yes yes so when our body should be regulating yeah yes so when are we going to stop talking about this whole thing where it's a woman's issue? It's a fucking human being issue. Yeah, we're not talking thing. enough. Actually, it's not even, it's not that we're not talking enough about contraceptives and birth control. It's that we're not helping people have the resources for them. Not everyone mm-hmm. has access to birth control. Not everyone has access to health insurance to help them pay for their birth control. In fact, you know what? Sometimes it would happen to my friend. Sometimes people are raped. And Mm -hmm. that's never someone's fault. And you know what? If she, no one should be forced to have their rapist child. No. And I feel like, I mean, I am so grateful for you to be able to tell this story. And I'm so happy that it didn't happen to you. And I'm so sorry that it did happen to her, but that she at least got some kind of redemption. Um, And I, I'm glad that we included this story because there are many, many cases where this happens. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, when you bring up, it should just be like incest or rape or whatever, like, that like muddles the conversation. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it does. Because there are people who um, c- just need to get an abortion or whatever. But there are numbers out there that says that these are things that will happen. So if if there is only a clause that it's like, you can get an abortion from incest or rape. It's like, that's still going to be a lot, a lot of humans. Um, Mm -hmm. And they are entitled to that, but also so is the person who had a a one night stand that they don't want to have anybody who doesn't want to have a baby, you know, exactly. And I was joking about regulating the penis bodies too, because no, we're not going to do that. Don't regulate anybody's body. Just give them yeah. exactly what you were saying, access to education yeah, and maybe a really good friend who can help you through it. The more we talk about these serious issues, the easier they'll be to talk about. Totally. The, we may be able to help people who may not know that they have options, have those options. And, you know, thirdly, we can prevent things like this from happening to a lot of people because rape is preventable and we just have not reached that point where people understand, Hey, ask for consent. And if you don't have consent, move the fuck on. Exactly. Um, there is this one organization, um, plan C who Mm -hmm. is, they put up billboard on the back of a truck and have been going past three parts of Texas. Um, and it's like missed period. There's a pill for that. And their mission is to increase access to abortion pills and needed information on how to use them. Mm -hmm. And so they operate outside of state lines and everything. And they're trying to just make everything safe so that people can leave and get the... And mail in. You can get them in the mail. Well, Texas is apparently going to be uh, banning mailed abortions as well, like abortion Mm -hmm. medications. So they have to be out of state to even make any contact about whether or not they want to get an abortion. Mm. But maybe people could have the pills sent to a friend, sent to another I'm, person I'm sure and repackaged ways, or something. Can't, 
they can't like in if they're in Texas themselves, they're not allowed to seek out um, medication. Ah, virtual visits, right? The location okay. is based on where they are, so they have to be out of state to do it. So they're trying to organize like accommodation and food and um, everything out of state. Oh for these my god, so that's so nice to border states like Colorado and whatever the fuck else is near Texas, your country. And they um, go there and they can get the access to this. And then a couple of days later, the pills will arrive. So they go for like three days or something, get cool. an abortion, go home. Cool, Legal. cool, cool. Um, well, Haley, it's yeah. been a joy talking to you. Really appreciate you sharing this and just like being such an awesome advocate and a friend to your friend. I appreciate you having me be on here. Um, I've been a fan of the shows for the last two years and I absolutely love that. We're all just talking about this and having a good time. I listen to the podcast at my job. Um, this is obviously like the subject was a little, got a little serious, but like I had a fun time and I'm glad that like, you know, we can share this with other people and like maybe other people can totally. be more educated about this topic. Totally. I have to ask you after such an experience, um, did you finish? Really? Uh, I certainly did. And I enjoyed myself. <laughs> okay, great. I'm nice. so glad. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming. Have a good day. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. 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 Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming. I'm about to cry. Don't cry. You. you can cry if you want, but I'm just happy to have you here. So excited and nervous at the same time. Sorry. Uh. Same every day of my life. Um, so yeah. you're in good company. Um, welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's of so course. weird. It's so weird. Um, it's so you, weird. you shared your story with us via Instagram and we were like, holy shit. Um, we need to have yeah. her on. Um, so if you wouldn't mind walking us through that and yeah yeah so it's not my story uh, yeah just to be clear it's a good friend of mine uh we're in Peru uh, South America mm-hmm. so the situation here has changed and it's even worse now <laughs> because oh, we just elected a, a president that it's even worse than the one that we used to have Mm-hmm. And he's, uh, I don't know the word, I don't know if the word's machista, but it's machista, like machista. Super, I, I don't know if manly. Yeah. Um, I don't know the word for that. It's like the opposite of feminist. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me tell you this story that happened literally yesterday. Okay. Um, there was this uh, girl who uh, accused somebody of uh, molesting her or something. I don't really know the details of it. But this guy that is not the president, but it's somebody in, in, in power mm-hmm. said uh, that we women should think about <laughs> uh, men before we accuse them of uh, uh, whatever. Like think yeah. about what you could do to his life. Exactly. And he Promising was like talking young man. On, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was like talking on open television, like uh, you should think about us. Like we're Jesus parents, Christ. we are teachers, we are. And he was. It Why don't you think too. about you before you do that shit? If you are parents yeah, and teachers. And he, I think he's like the prime minister right now or something. I, I might be lying, but That's he's like a really someone high up. person. Yeah. Yeah. So, well. Well, that's heartbreaking. To- Sorry to hear <laughs> about that. Yeah, it's it's really bad right now. And uh, we were going on a really good path. Like, well, not really. We're in South America. It's mm-hmm. never a good path. but having in mind that we're Seeming in getting better yeah it was like a good light like um sex education was kind of becoming an idea here mm-hmm. until this president came and said nah, this is not how it goes so uh what happened to my friend this was uh i think march of this year this so year? yeah she wow. found out that she was pregnant and she said, ha, no. And the boyfriend, she said, uh, he said, uh, yeah, we're having it. And mm. she said, no, I'm not having it. So she had to uh, do it alone at first. But luckily, she has a really close friend that is a doctor. 
-hmm. So these friends said, yeah, you're not doing it alone. I'm going to give you the pills uh, mm -hmm. that are really, really hard to get here. But he's a mm -hmm. doctor, so he got them illegally, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, really risky. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got the pills and yeah, she took the pills. So she started the process. You know, it's a lot of bleeding and everything. And she explained to me uh, what you have to do next. So there are two options. You can go to a private clinic or to a state hospital. Uh, she has a insurance, which you can go to a, uh, well, I don't know how it's in the US, but here you can go to a clinic, which is like a good thing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it's private, of course, uh, they are going to do everything in their power so they don't have to pay what they can. So they're going to search for every kind of trace of whatever it is uh, they can find. Illegal activity. Exactly. So if they mm -hmm. find that you did it and it mm -hmm. was not a mis uh, like a natural miscarriage, they c they have to report it to authorities so they don't pay for your whatever <sighs> they have to do to you, right? Uh -huh. So it's it's really risky to go to the non risky way, which is a yeah. clinic. Yeah. So she had to go to a state hospital and bear in mind that we're in <laughs> South America and this is COVID. Mm -hmm. So there are no vaccines yet. And uh, she's putting herself in like a very dangerous situation. Yeah. So she went to this hospital and it was full of COVID mm -hmm. and um, bending over with pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody was giving her attention. She was like crying on the floor <laughs> saying like, I'm dying, I'm mm -hmm. dying. And she was literally bleeding out and nobody was looking and at she was her alone. In that moment, she was alone because her friend like had an emergency, the doctor mm -hmm. friend had an emergency at that second. Mm -hmm. But luckily the doctor friend could come to the hospital with her and just yeah. grab her by the hand and walk her through and everything. But without a friend, I really don't know what could have happened to her. Yeah. So after also in the first said, place, like he's the one who made everything be able to happen. He got the pills in, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And also the boyfriend was, it was really bad. And yeah, she was I can't the imagine hospital. the boyfriend just trying to force her to do it is so insane oh, to me. Yeah. No, she, that, that, that the guy turned into a stalker later on. Uh, he forced her to tell her mom about the abortion. <gasps> the mom, as a Peruvian mom, uh, religious and all that crap. And yeah, it's been, it's been a really tough couple of months oh yeah so luckily they broke up because at first she was like oh, yeah. no he's just lost his mind but mm -hmm. then I we were like talking and she just understood that it was not good for her uh -huh. it's been really rough but well she was in the hospital for like more than 10 hours until finally somebody said oh what's wrong with you <laughs> and she was like I'm having a miscarriage I think <laughs> Because she had to play it like play it right. dumb, right. so to speak. Yeah. So uh, finally, she was taken somewhere, and there's this uh, procedure that they do to like remove uh, the tissues uh, when you're having a miscarriage. I I don't know the word in English for it. We'll figure it um, out. I don't know it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in Spanish, it's legrado. Legrado. It is. Legrado. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So she had to have that which, curatage, um, curatage. Yes, yeah. that's the word. Scraping, but, uh, uh, dilation, mm. evacuation. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Is that uh, the seaweed stick? No, <laughs> I don't know. But apparently, it's a really traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. Like it's really, it's really painful in that. And she had to keep quiet all the time because she was really scared to say something that could uh, i don't know Implicate tell the doctor her. yeah uh, exactly yeah because many many of the doctors are really religious <laughs> so yeah if this girl that has all i don't know pretty face of it because <sighs> i don't know how to say this but here in peru uh they're very um classist i don't know if that's the mm -hmm. word but mm -hmm. You have like the white girls and the non-white girls, and mm -hmm. it's it's really Colorist. hard. Yeah, and you can look at me, and I'm like the white girls. So right. if I say something, 
uh, anything. Mm-hmm. At the, that same moment, I was like, ah, you cannot do that. So my girl, my my girlfriend, my friend is just like me. So mm-hmm. she just kept quiet because uh, she she was so scared of saying anything. Mm. So yeah, she had to uh, stay in the hospital for like two days with COVID all around her. Oh my god! Yeah, and they wouldn't discharge her because uh, there were no doctors around her. Uh, yeah. So when she finally got the papers for her discharge, because that was the reason for her not discharge, just yeah. because the papers were lost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She finally got out and that was it. And then the boyfriend made her tell the mom and tell the brothers and tell everybody. And then he kept her in her, in her bedroom, like telling this was wrong. Like you shouldn't have done this. Yeah, the boyfriend, like, you killed my dreams of being a father, like. You this. know you still have sperm, sir, right? <laughs> like, you know I don't know. Again? You can do yeah. it again, literally. Yeah, so, yeah, it was it was really bad because when that first happened, she told me, like, yeah, this happened. She was, like, really cool about it. Mm. But Air after quotes. a couple of months, yeah literally mm-hmm. this because after a couple of months my sister actually had a baby and I was uh showing her pictures of the baby mm-hmm. and at first she was so cool and then one day she just said just, just stop I can't yeah and I was like oh I'm, I'm so sorry I will never show you pictures anymore and she was like I was cool but the boyfriend keeps telling me I want to be a father so I just making her feel guilty and making her feel like it was more of a child than it actually was like he was probably being like yeah. you killed my baby and it was like no I had yeah. some cells sucked out I didn't exactly. kill any babies exactly yeah. and my friend was like I cannot have a child right now I want to have my master's in Europe I, I, I can't right now I don't want right now and yeah I mean I'm glad that she sense. got like I'm she's fine now i assume or... she's getting better it, it's it's been really rough but she's really getting better. oh right this yeah. is only within the year she's not fine but is she physically yeah. okay <laughs> yeah she is okay good so yeah. i'm glad that she's physically okay but like yeah this is a huge mental and emotional yes. toll from so many different factors like this is i mean one of the most intense stories that mm-hmm. we've heard on here because <laughs> it is like, yeah, what we're going through in Texas and in Arizona yeah, and, and all these different places, they are pretty stringent, but it's like, you guys have been going through this for such a long time that it's like yeah. probably m- even more embedded mm-hmm. in and people's I think psyches. It's not going to go away. Like, uh, we have something here called ideología de género, which is translated into uh, gen- gender ideology. Mm-hmm. And um it's actually a good thing in theory which is uh to teach children uh that either you're a girl or boy it, it doesn't matter you just have to be a good person yeah but um, I like that yeah it, it's a good thing in theory but mm-hmm. religious people don't understand it like that they say that they're trying to teach people how to be gay <laughs> like what or well, how to be trans or how to have anal sex which <laughs> which we are that's what we're trying to do um if that's what you want no we're just trying to like tell everybody that everything is okay but i think yeah. what they have a problem with it is that once you say that like it, gender isn't that different then you lose those like traditional roles in the bible that are like the, yeah. the woman is made to cater to the man and the man is there to provide for the woman or whatever and it's like that's that's very integral oh, it's, to yeah, it. I, no idea. Yeah. Uh, I think you should really, if you want to have a, a good laugh and a good cry at the same time. Um, always. <laughs> you should uh, research a bit about our new president. Uh, his mm-hmm. name is Pedro Castillo. And um, he is like, he's so funny because he he sounds really misogynist, but you could also say he's such an ignorant person yeah. that some people say it's Trump. Some, it's Trump. Yeah. It's like he's funny yeah, but, and he's like 
funny because he's so dumb. No, no, no. He's not <laughs> even funny. I, I think Trump is a little bit funnier. Castillo is just plain stupid. And um, <laughs> because Trump at the end of the day is, is like a billionaire. Only because of his dad. Figure. If his yeah, yeah, dad, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if he had just taken the money that his dad left him and never spent any money, he would have more than he has now. Like he's only lost money. He's not a good business. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a good take. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Castillo is such, it's really dangerous. So dangerous that now our uh, currency is worth uh, the least that it's ever worth in like uh, 40 years. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, we're dying. And COVID is the worst that's been in, it's been two years of COVID. And oh. yeah, so now contraceptive uh, methods and that are no longer uh, free. Uh, the morning after pill used to be in the, like, uh, emergency kit for, like, rape victims. Okay. Now there is no kit for for rape victims. I don't know why. Like when the president got into power, they went away. And also, uh, there used to be a, a, a religious man running up for president. That it's from the okay. I don't know if you know about this religious group, which really is a part of. Mm -mm. Um. That he used to say, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's something. Uh, he said that children, like little girls who get pregnant, obviously by rape, they don't need abortions. What they need is a five-star hotel with a, a view of the pool, and that's all they need. What? And he almost got into the yeah. That's what Sorry. he said. <laughs> Um, so yeah, just to assume said, that that's something that's that they do need, need, it's not. But was he offering that to victims or survivors? Yes, yes, he was offering that. What they need uh, through their pregnancy, it's a good hotel and a pool for nine months. Yeah, children, <laughs> and then when the children have the kid. Where are they supposed oh, to live no. with it then? <laughs> he didn't say anymore because obviously pro-life people only care about the pregnancy when they're right. uh, already, yeah. So yeah, he was offering, because he has hotels and trains and whatever. So maybe he can offer them some, oh my God. I don't know, trips. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And he almost won the election. So, really yeah, horrible country, choices all around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do we help? I don't know. <laughs> I so, really wish somebody else knew about what's going on in our country. Like, yeah. In, in that matter, because when I talk to like yeah. my mom or my aunts and whatever, they only care about like money. And I say, mom, if you cared about victims of rape, if you cared about uh, like, I don't know, pregnancy, and how to avoid it for teen pregnancy better yeah. as well yeah <laughs> maybe just me definitely yeah. that's what i i mean but they don't see it because yeah we live in a bubble here i mean my family bubble i i am one of the few blonde people in this country i live in a bubble here mm -hmm. so they don't see it so, oh, that's so how tough. to help and no. Well, I think telling everybody on this episode will be pretty good just so <laughs> we yeah, just so we know absolutely. like what everybody else is dealing with around the world like yeah. I feel like everyone feels like they're in dire need right now for yeah, many different reasons and like just to be able to like commiserate over it and like find common ground and maybe solutions for like what we can all do to fight back. Um it's good. It just it does, it sucks does. that like all of these cases are so, so very extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I do think that information is power and, uh, mm -hmm. well, some sort of power. Yeah. And like yeah. what you were saying about the economy and everybody caring, like I just bring it back to Freakonomics again. And it's like abortions are good for the economy. 
Did you know that? Mm -hmm. That like when people are raised and wanted, they are yeah. citizens. <laughs> I didn't know that, but I can see how. <laughs> Freakonomics. It's a great doc and a great book. And I never read the book, but I saw the doc. <laughs> and it's <laughs> And I hear it's, yeah, it's a great book. Um, yeah, so she um, she was comfortable enough coming to you and talking to you about it. Is that because you guys yeah. are really close or are people like your age more open about it to a certain extent? No, 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 no. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. This country is so, so close. No. She's lucky mm -hmm. that she had you to talk to about it. And she's lucky that she had that doctor friend. Yeah, she's so lucky and about that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, our hearts go out to everybody who did not have that opportunity. Um, and even yeah. still to her, because she's maybe physically healed and is physically okay, but mentally she's probably not doing the best. And yeah. you, you deserve to feel happy, you out there. Uh, I'm so happy that I, I can't believe that I'm talking to you. Like, um, if I can go off script right now, like a, a year and a half ago, you um posted on instagram like how are you doing yeah and i uh answered and i said i'm about to kill myself oh that was and you. you answered are you okay and i didn't answer for a lot of time yeah because i got into treatment and i was uh i don't know how to say like institutionalized i don't know the yeah, word institutionalized <laughs> and uh hey, that's the word <laughs> that's the word <laughs> And um, <laughs> I'm doing so much better. I'm so And glad. I remember when I got out, I saw your message like, are you okay? And I was like, ah, I can't believe like somebody's asking me this because nobody knew I was doing so bad. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. Us. You didn't know. But <laughs> because I didn't I know wrote, to the extent. Yeah. I, because I didn't know you because yeah. I didn't, obviously. And I wrote to you because I didn't know you. And it was so cute to have like this message of just some random but you are my best friend in my ears but you we don't know each other but it was like super nice to have this little message like are you okay and i was like yeah i'm, I'm getting better thank you good i don't know if i even answered by it but i i i told myself like, no you yeah. did eventually <laughs> yeah i was like <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm sorry about that message. I, I, it's okay. I'm really sorry about that. No, it's honestly like I, I, I mean, that I know of everybody who's reached out and has been feeling that way has gotten better, you know, and, and usually it's just, you need somebody so to vent to, you know, and somebody who's not going to judge you for yeah. feeling that way. And like, I would never judge you for feeling that way or like, being institutionalized i'm like so good cool. job that you took care of your brain like yeah I'm proud of you thank you yeah <laughs> yeah and um i was just about to cancel you today because <laughs> to cancel um, me yeah to, uh, no 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 like oh, cancel. oh. Like, i was like oh. what did i do <laughs> no 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 bad word uh like cancel the ah cancel this appointment yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. <laughs> because happy birthday to me today's my birthday and happy i got birthday. To, like, i was having like the worst day and i said you know what i can't go today to this thing and i smoked the joint and i said i'm going <laughs> amazing i'm so happy that you came here and that yeah i mean you're basically me just in a more southern america um <laughs> i'm um, so happy that i have met you this is so me too. So random. So oh, so, so random. Fun. I told my boy I told my boyfriend yesterday and he was like, What? Because I always talk to <laughs> about <laughs> you guys. And we had a, a road trip like two weeks ago and I made him listen like three episodes. <laughs> and Unreal. it was super fun. We heard the Twilight one. He was laugh ass off. It's so he good. Was, it was super fun. So when I told him, he was like what this is the best thing that's happened to you <laughs> like yeah <laughs> and, and right and it now came from such I a think, traumatizing story for your friend but <laughs> yeah <laughs> which one which was like even funnier like i told my friend yesterday like ah this happened i told your story to 
somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going on a podcast. And she was like, what? <laughs> Is she okay with it? Yeah, of course. Uh, I asked okay, her, cool. like, can I tell the story? And she was like, yeah, of course. Maybe we can help somebody with this. But don't say my name. And I was like, yeah, of course, no, I'm not never. saying your name. <laughs> never. And she was like, yeah, do it. Like, this is so crazy. <laughs> so Unreal. Uh, Julia, yeah. we have to let you go because we only have a minute left in of here. Of course, don't worry. Um, don't worry. But this I has been this. such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much Thank for sharing. So. Um, have to ask you this question after such a wonderful experience. Um, <laughs> Julia, did you finish? I did, and I have finished all the time since I started listening to you. I love it. I'm so happy. Um, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you for having me. And we'll see the rest of you uh, next time on How Come. Goodbye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know. When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.